Good day, my dear young intellectuals. How was your asynchronous learning so far? I am Sir Christian Ronimo, your science teacher for this school year. I hope that you're learning something from the learning materials and resources that I provided to you. In this video, we are going to learn about the regions of electromagnetic spectrum, which is under Unit 1, all about energy. In this lesson, you will learn how to define and describe the general properties of electromagnetic waves. You should be able to compare the relative wavelengths of different forms of electromagnetic waves. Before we proceed to the main topic of our video, let us have our key questions first. The first key question is, what are gen the general properties and characteristics of each EM wave in the EM spectrum? And the last key question is, what are the practical applications and effect of each EM wave to humans and environment? So at the end of this video, we should be able to answer those two key questions. So without further ado, let us start with our lecture video. First, what is electromagnetic spectrum? According to NASA, the electromagnetic spectrum is the range of all types of EM radiation. So we can say that it's composed of seven electromagnetic rays or electromagnetic waves arranged according to their wavelength, frequency, and energy. So we have the radio waves having the longest wavelength, lowest frequency, and the lowest energy towards the gamma rays, which has the shortest wavelength, highest energy, and highest frequency. So all in all, we have 7 EM waves arranged according to their wavelength and frequency. So let us have first the radio waves. Radio waves, in terms of frequency, it is that it has the lowest frequency of all the EM waves, ranging from 30 kHz to 3000 MHz. In terms of wavelength, it, is, it has the longest wavelength of all the EM waves, ranging from 1 mm to 100 km. And in terms of sources, we can say that it is coming from the alternating current circuit attached to an antenna, such as in this picture. And in terms of application, the major application or practical application of radio waves is that it is used for wireless communication. Some examples of those practical applications are radar, or also known as the radio detection and ranging, which is used for detection of objects, weather forecasting, military surveillance, and air traffic control. We also have automatic doors. Another application is the radio frequency identification or RFID. We also have Wi-Fi. And then another one is Bluetooth. And we also have the GPS or the Global Positioning System which measures the time it takes to a radio wave to travel from several satellites to the receiver, determining the distance to each satellite. So it is used to determine directions. We also have MRI, or the Magnetic Resonance Imaging, which is used for viewing internal parts of the human body without invasive exploratory surgery. And lastly, we also have reducing the cellulite on the body, such as wrinkles. In terms of the effects to humans and the environment, we can say that overexposure to radio waves can cause migraine, headache, and it can also harm the body cells, only if we have overexposure. So we need to set limitations whenever we use gadgets that produces radio waves. The next EM wave that we are going to discuss is microwaves. In terms of frequency, it has higher frequency than radio waves. And in terms of wavelength, it has shorter wavelength than radio waves. And what are the sources of microwaves? Some examples or some sources of microwaves are the circuits, transmission towers, radar, masers, and microwave ovens, as well as natural sources such as the sun and the cosmic microwave background. Okay. So whenever we hear the word microwave, the first word that comes to our, our mind is microwave oven. 
Well, in fact, it is true because one of the practical applications of microwave is that it is used in microwave ovens to heat food. Another application is that it is used in Doppler radars used for weather forecasting such as in this picture. We also have microwave ablation which, uh, which uses the heat of the microwave to shrink or destroy tumors such as in the picture. So we have here the tumor and then we have here the microwave, microwave which is being utilized to shrink or destroy the tumor inside the body without undergoing series of surgery. We also have microwave imaging that is used to monitor the progress of treatment in breast cancer. And lastly, we also have microwave tomography that can be distinguished as a malignant or it is used to di distinguish a particular cell to be a malignant such as in this illustration. Okay. Some effects of microwaves to humans and environment is that it can cause internal heating of body tissues because we all know that microwaves produces heat. So, overexposure to microwaves can cause internal heating of the body tissues, such as in this picture. So, we can observe that the region of our body that has the red spot means that it has high temperature. So, overexposure to microwaves can cause internal heating of body tissues, which is harmful. Next, we have the infrared rays. In terms of its definition, it means below red. So, infra means below. So, it is below the red of the frequency that can be found in the visible light. So, we can say that in terms of frequency, it has higher frequency than microwaves. And in terms of wavelength, it has shorter wavelength than microwaves. Okay? And for the sources... One major source of the infrared is humans, we will talk about that later, animals, places, and objects that give off infrared radiation or the body temperature. Now, what are the practical applications of infrared rays? It is mainly used for remote controls. So whenever we want to switch channels, infrared rays is being utilized to switch channels. Another one is alarm system. Another use is night vision cameras. And we also have thermogram, which is a picture that shows regions of different temperatures in the body. Now, the reason why of that humans or organisms is said to be the one of the primary source of infrared rays is that we give off our heat. So, we give off infrared rays in the form of heat and that heat is being measured in terms of different gadgets that we have. When we use night vision cameras, the one that we utilize there is the heat that is being given off by a particular organism or by a particular thing. Okay. And in terms of another application, it is being used by physiotherapists to heat or to heal the sport injuries in terms of heat lamps and it is also being used by medical uh, in the in the use of medical infrared imaging for diagnosis and prognosis in areas like oncology rheumatology sports medicine and orthopedics so as you can see in this picture the region of your body which has red spots means that it needs a particular diagnosis Okay, so it can detect many diseases and disorders in their early stages due to the heat given up by our body. So there will be normal scale and there will be abnormal scale. So those with abnormality, uh, those with abnormality in the body will be detected by infrared in terms of heat given up by that particular region. And some effects to humans and environment is that People who work in industries which expose them to infrared radiation for long periods of time may experience eye damage, of course. Another one is that large doses of infrared wa waves can also damage skin and tissues because in, it is in the form of heat. So exposure, overexposure is very harmful to us. 
and infrared waves are involved also in greenhouse effect. The Earth's surface and the clouds above it absorb radiation from the sun's rays and re-emit it as infrared radiation back out into the atmosphere. So as you can see, the sun gives off visible light with heat with them and then some of those heat are being absorbed in the Earth's surface and some are given off. Some are trapped and some are given off into uh, out, back out to the atmosphere. Okay? So it is also involved in greenhouse effect, our infrared waves. Next EM wave, we have the visible light. In terms of frequency, it has higher frequency than infrared rays. So we, we usually uh, observe visible light as the only EM wave that we can see. So it ranges from 430 terahertz seen as color red to 750 terahertz seen as violet. In terms of wavelength, it has shorter wavelength than infrared rays. So as you can notice in our lecture, whenever we introduce something or a new EM wave, it usually has higher frequency than the previous EM wave and it has shorter wavelength than the previous EM wave. Okay? So as you as we proceed to gamma rays, the frequency becomes higher. As we proceed to gamma rays, the wavelength becomes shorter. So do the energy. It becomes higher as we proceed to gamma rays. And the major source of visible light is the sun and some light emitting materials or animals. And those animals that can actually produce light in the form of bioluminescence, such as firefly, jellyfish, and some fishes. Now, we often dedicate this EM wave to the formation of rainbow. Because as you can see in the rainbow, we can actually determine the seven colors being dispersed by a visible light. So, having such, we can say that the longest wavelength of the seven colors is the red light, while the shortest wavelength is the violet or the purple light. Okay, so, red as the longest wavelength means in the seven colors of the visible light, it has the longest wavelength, it has the lowest energy, it has the lowest frequency. On the other hand, purple or violet has the shortest wavelength, it has the highest frequency, therefore it has the highest energy of the seven colors in the visible light spectrum. Some applications of visible light is that it helps us to see objects. That's the major application of visible light. Without visible light, we cannot see the true colors of the objects around us. It is also being used in traffic lights. We use visible light to recognize the traffic lights. So green means go, red means stop, orange means near, uh, going to stop. And then we also have commercial di displays, car headlights, and it is also being utilized by photosynthetic organisms to produce their own food in the form of photosynthesis. So sunlight is being needed in the form of light energy or the visible light for the plants to make their own food. And we also have optical fibers which replaced the telephone wires to transmit signals at high speed or long distance. So we usually... Uh, look at this as fiber plants in terms of internet connection. Okay? So it replaces the telephone wires. So it uses light in terms of connectivity. And it's also used for optical imaging and surgery. And lastly, endoscopy treatment. This is uh, somehow a tube with, with light on it that is being inserted in our gastrointestinal tract to observe whether there will be a malignant or there will be a tumor lying on your gastrointestinal tract. So it is very useful because it uses light and a camera to observe your internal organs. So without the visible light, we can only see dark portions of our internal organs. So it used to light up the 
gastrointestinal tract whenever we insert tubes towards our GI tract. And what are the effects to humans and environment of visible light? Of course, overexposure can lead to skin cancer such as this one. So, whenever we are overly exposed to sunlight, we can uh, we can acquire cancer. To be more specific, skin cancer. Next, we have ultraviolet rays. In terms of frequency, it has higher frequency than visible light. And in terms of wavelength, it has shorter wavelength than visible light. And what is the major source? The sun. Okay? And we also have three types of ultraviolet rays. We have UVA, UVB, and UVC. Now, let us have the applications first before we, we discuss the three types of ultraviolet rays. So, in terms of applications, it is used to kill bacteria in the form of sterilization technique. Okay, when we say sterilization, we totally kill the microorganisms including the bacteria and the viruses. So, it is very uh, useful nowadays because as we uh, combat the invisible enemy around us, which is the coronavirus, we use UV sterilizer to clean our uh, clean a particular object around us to become sterilized. So when we sterilize a particular object, we are actually killing the bacteria or viruses. And it causes our skin to produce vitamin D, which is good for the teeth and the bones. Okay? So we have actually vitamin D, an inactivated inactivated vitamin D but what causes our skin to actually activate that inactivated vitamin D is the use of ultraviolet rays from the sun okay so we utilize the ultraviolet rays or the UV light from the sun for our vitamin D to be activated so once it's activated it is now useful for our body mechanism and it is also used for black light if you are familiar with detection to forgery banknotes such as this one. Whenever we pay something that we buy, the teller or the cashier usually use this black light to determine whether our banknote is real or fake. And it's also used during forensic investigations at crime scenes. Okay, so, we use UV rays to detect for the blood stains, for saliva, for other, uh, for other liquids that we usually produce. And it is also used to treat skin conditions like psoriasis, in this, just like in this picture, and we also have vitiligo. So, it is being used to treat such skin disorders. Now, what are the effects to humans' environment? Now, we we say earlier that we need UV light for us to produce vitamin D. But too much exposure to UV light or UV rays can cause skin cancer. That's why we have a certain period of time where we are allowed to be exposed to sunlight. Usually around 5 to or 5.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. will do, but after that, we don't need to be exposed too much to the sunlight. So, if ever that we are going to uh, roam around or we go outside with sun being radiated extremely, we use sunblock. Okay? We use the sunblock to protect against the UV rays. And it can also cause blindness, especially if you're looking directly at the sunlight. And it can cause premature aging of the skin and as well as sunburn. So, overexposure to ultraviolet rays can cause skin disorders. Now, let's talk about the three types of ultraviolet rays. So, we have UVA, UVB, and UVC. Of the three ultraviolet rays, only UVA and UVB can penetrate the Earth's atmosphere except UVC. But in terms of UVA, 
overexposure to UVA can, ca can cause cataract or retinal diseases somewhere on the eye damage because it reaches the lens and the retina of our eyes. If we are exposed naman to UVB, it can cause skin cancer, overexposure. And if we are exposed to UVC, it can cause most damage other than skin disorders. But it is being blocked by atmosphere, so thanks to our atmosphere, we are not uh, exposed too much to UVC. But we still need to observe our surroundings because we are being penetrated by UVA and UVB. So too much exposure is harmful. Now, let us have X-rays. In terms of frequency, it has higher frequency than UV rays. In terms of wavelength, it has shorter wavelength than UV rays. And it can penetrate most matter because it has high energy carried. So it carries high amount of energy than the previous EM wave. So it can penetrate most matter. And sometimes it is called the Roentgent rays because of the discoverer known as Wilhelm Conrad Roentgen. Okay, so it is sometimes called as Roentgen rays. And if we are going to observe whenever we go to a laboratory, some medical technicians who are expert to x-rays are called rentologists. Okay, and some sources of x-rays are sun and radon gas which are radioactive elements found in the earth and another source of x-ray is the cosmic rays that can hit the earth from the outer space okay so those are the different sources of x-rays now there are actually two classifications of x-rays we have soft x-ray and we have we have hard x-rays so what is the difference between the two? When we say hard x-rays, it is more penetrating than soft because it is used mainly in industries. While soft x-rays are used to soft substances like flesh and bones. So if we are going to observe, if we, we want to know what kind of x-ray is being used whenever we undergo medical treatments, they, use, uh, they usually use soft x-ray because it is used for soft, su soft substances such as flesh and bones. Okay. So, we have here the soft x-rays used for our internal, bad, uh, internal organs to detect any fracture. And we also have hard x-rays which is, which is used for objects which is mainly used for penetrating infrastructures. Now, let us have the practical applications. Number one, bones and teeth absorb x-rays because they are more dense than our internal organs or than our muscles. So the light part of the x-ray image indicates a place where the x-ray was absorbed. So usually, x-rays being absorbed in our bones or by our bones and by our teeth. So such as in this image, so, the x-rays that can be found in the light part of the image is usually the bones. Okay? It's usually the bone that, absor uh, that absorbs the x-rays. And it's also used by engineers to check for tiny cracks in structures. So, we use x-ray image to detect the cracks. So, the light part indicates the crack. And it's also used in dental imaging. So whenever we have a consultation with regards to our oral checkup, usually the dentist will have our teeth be x-rayed. Okay, so to observe whenever we have crack or we have fracture or to determine the placing of our dental, uh, den dental uh, or teeth. Okay. And it's also used in airport security checks to see the inside of the passenger luggage, such as in this picture. So it is also being utilized for security purposes, not just for medical purposes, such as in x-rays. And overexposure to x-rays can cause cancer. That's why dentists and other medical technologists 
use lead vest so that the x-ray will not penetrate towards or into the body. Okay, so lead cannot be penetrated by x-rays. So it is used for protection. And overexposure may damage central nervous system, which is very sensitive to uh, which is very sensitive to factors that may affect from the environment. And it can also damage cells. So it is it has domino effect. Once it reaches our body due to overexposure, it can harm the cells that makes us live. And then last we have the gamma rays. In terms of frequency, it has higher frequency than X-rays. And in terms of wavelength, it has shorter wavelength than X-rays. Therefore, this is our last EM wave to talk about. It has the highest frequency of them all. It has the shortest wavelength of them all. So it carries the greatest amount of energy and penetrates the most. It is highly penetrating because of their very short wavelength. So shorter wavelength means higher energy means higher frequency and one of the sources of gamma rays is the universe and radioactive materials like cobalt 60 and cesium 137 now what are the practical applications of gamma rays first just like ultraviolet rays or x-rays it is also used in radiation treatments to kill cancer cells so it is used in radiation therapy to kill cancer cells it is also used in industries to detect cracks in metals and to sterilize equipment and commercial products. It is also used in helping to the farmers to breed new seeds, varieties with higher yields such as the miracle rice. And it's also used to destroy cancer cells. In short, it is more on radiotherapy. Now in our agricultural aspect, Whenever we use gamma rays in a particular seed, it can cause mutation to the DNA of the organism. And it can also cause uh, killing the bacterial cells that is invading the plant itself. Okay. Now, in terms of overexposure or effects to humans and environment, Overexposure can actually kill healthy cells. Yes, it is used for killing the cancer cells, but the surrounding normal cells can also be affected when exposed to gamma rays. It can also cause the genes to mutate, such as what we just discussed a while ago about the plants. And since it has the greatest amount of energy, it can actually penetrate even the hardest objects, such, uh, such as lead. Okay. So, uh, as compared to X-rays, which cannot penetrate lead materials, gamma rays, on the other hand, can penetrate lead. That's why we need to be extra careful of the EM waves around us, particularly those that produces gamma rays or radioactive materials when it comes to source. Now, let's talk about radiation. We have two types of radiation, non-ionizing and ionizing radiation. When it comes to non-ionizing radiation, we have radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, and some ultraviolet. But when it comes to ionizing radiation, we have X-rays and gamma rays. Now, what is the difference between the two? Ionizing radiation means it has sufficient energy to remove electrons from atoms or molecules as it passes through matter. Now, from your chemistry class, you have learned that a particular atom has exact or, or some amounts of electrons surrounding that orbit or within the orbit of that atom. Now, whenever it is exposed, that atom is exposed to ionizing radiation, that electron that revolves around this orbit will be removed. And that as the electrons being removed from that atom, there will be this what we call excitation of electrons. Okay, so this excitation of electrons will cause great change to that particular atom. So some examples of ionizing radiation is X-rays, gamma rays, beta particles, and alpha particles. On the other hand, we have non-ionizing radiation. These are radiations that is not as energetic as ionizing radiation and it cannot remove electrons from atoms or molecules. 
So unlike ionizing radiation, non-ionizing radiation cannot remove electrons. So it cannot cause somehow excitation of electrons. And some examples of non-ionizing radiation are like lasers, heat microwaves, and radar. So let us observe some examples of ionizing and non-ionizing radiations. So cell phones are non-ionizing because it is it utilizes radio waves for signals and also visible light. Laptops which uses visible light and radio waves are not ionizing radiation or does not emit ionizing radiation so it is non-ionizing. X-rays has great amount of energy therefore it can remove an electron from an atom therefore it is an ionizing radiation so it produces ionizing radiation so overexposure can be harmful sun in a form of visible light can be non-ionizing but in a form of ultraviolet rays is ionizing and we have this particular radiotherapy setup which utilizes gamma rays therefore it is ionizing so it produces ionizing radiation so we don't usually undergo radiotherapy in a normal scale so that's why we can somehow tell that we cannot have an overexposure to this kind of radiation but still we need to be aware of our surroundings of our objects that we use every day so those are the summary of our topic. So the summary of our lecture video is that the electromagnetic spectrum from lowest energy or longest wavelength at the top, which is the radio waves, to the highest or shortest wavelength in terms of its uh, diagram, we have the gamma rays. So starting from radio waves, which has the longest wavelength, lowest energy, lowest frequency, towards gamma rays which has the shortest wavelength, highest frequency, and highest energy. So those are the seven electromagnetic waves that comprises the electromagnetic spectrum. So as a summary, radio waves are used for radio, for amateur radio, and for communication purposes. Microwaves, the main use is microwave oven to heat the food. For infrared, we use it for TV control or TV remote controls. And then we also use them for night vision goggles. Visible light, it is being used for us to see our surroundings. Ultraviolet is coming from the sun or exposure can cause skin disorders. X-rays for security and for medical purposes such as in medical X-rays. And then gamma rays, we have the PET scan and the terrestrial gamma ray flashes such as what we have here in terms of or in the form of lightning that produces gamma rays. Okay, I hope that you learned something from this lecture video and I hope that we will be able to be aware of our surroundings because overexposure to any of these electromagnetic waves can be harmful not just to humans but also to the environment so we must use them wisely thank you very much for watching and see you on our next video